noticeable names that you kept up here for more of a look, as in, you know, I don't have to tell you with Fratton and um, big defensemen, just your thoughts about what you're looking for them to do in these next couple games that are going to be harder games. Well, once again, as, as the exhibition season ramps up, now we're getting down to closer lineups. I mean, Buffalo last night had virtually their entire lineup other than two players. So it's a better test for the guys to see them in that environment. And the players are dictating this as much as you would say, you know, are you deciding who plays the games? Um, they're deciding who plays the games and who plays well. And that dictates if they get another shot. But some people are making decisions very difficult for us right now, which is the beauty of depth in organization. This is, this is what we want. We want it to be really, really difficult to decide who gets to be on the Toronto Maple Leafs. That means we're a better hockey club. Do injuries at all or guys getting healthy also impact who you may have decided to, you know, keep uh, in who and stick around? Or I don't doesn't? think today that had any factor at all. No, on an overall basis, I think we're relatively good. There's always, I mean, guys are always dinged in training camp at various points, but, uh, but sometimes they don't get an opportunity. They may have been slated to play an exhibition game, and for whatever reason they're not available that night, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get back in. And that's just the way it rolls. Were some of the guys you talked to today um, taken aback by the news, or were the people that were cut today generally probably saw it coming? I don't think anyone would like to tell you they saw it coming, and we don't want people to be happy with it. I mean, we really don't. Mm. You, you want them to be disappointed. Their goal is to be a Toronto Maple Leaf, and you want them to be disappointed when they're told that day they're not. But they've also got to understand it's a process, and the beauty of having the Toronto Marlies in town here is we get to see them play a lot. And now the challenge is up to them. It really is up to them to decide what happens next. And, you know, Wilson and I talked to them, and pretty good detail some of them about exactly what we felt and what had to be done and it's very encouraging because you're talking to the number of players we're talking to this morning have very bright upsides and while there's still work to do there's a great chance they're going to be a part of it. Were there emotional scenes up there? Uh, I think it's always emotional. I think guys are pretty professional about it and yet you know th this is a difficult difficult part of it and yet they've been through it I think virtually everyone that's played the game has been cut at some level. And you'd like to think we could transform it back to before it happens and say as long as you've done everything in your power and you've put your best foot forward, maybe that's not what's meant to be right now, but then you've got to change that moving forward. How far away is Colborne from being in this 29-man conversation as opposed to going back to the Marlies today? And what does he have to work on? That'll be up to Joe. Yeah. You know, I think more complete. Uh, you know, he played four exhibition games. He played well in spurts. Um, but he has to get more consistent. He knows that, and as is with the case with most young players, they have to get more consistency. There's a lot of people that can play this game for a game or two or three or four, but to play it over the course of a season and be consistent in that is what it takes to be a regular in this league. Dave, does this final week really give you, I guess, the, the final impression you need for some of these young guys like Gardner, like Fratton, when they're going against more NHL-laden rosters? Well, it does, Jonas. Once again, last night you saw a pretty full lineup, and we expect to see a full lineup in Ottawa Tuesday, and we expect to see a full lineup home and home against Detroit on the weekend. So it is good, but it's also good in the practices. Now you're getting down to a workable number where you're really having an NHL practice with a full team. So as much as decided on a day-to-day -day basis in practice as it will be in the games. Could you have ever foreseen Gardner having this early an impact? <laughs> He's made the decision. <laughs> you know what? Uh, everybody's watching the same thing here. And, you know, he's played very, very well, which has prompted the next opportunity to play well, which he's answered, which has prompted the next opportunity to play well. He's the one that's decided that he's got the number of games he's gotten. And so, you know, we're all just watching and it'll play out. What do you do if he keeps playing well and, he, and you know, he, maybe the coach wants him to stay to carry seven or eight defensemen? Or, or? We smile. <laughs> it's really good. Um, you know, I, we've all been a part of this for a long time. You've seen players emerge and players decide that, you know, and it's great when there is someone who maybe you didn't have slotted in. We all knew what the talent was, but he's carried the talent at a pretty high level, and we'll figure it out. It'll figure itself out. You know, it, it's no different. People asking me last year what the goaltender situation was. The goaltending situation last year figured it out. We didn't tell James Reimer he was number one. He played his way to the number one position.
What do you do with the Fret and Kadri competition, knowing that, you know, this is Kadri's third shot, and it seems that he is having his best camp so far. How do you keep that head level, knowing that there's still competition for him out there, and it seems that there are still negative things said about him. How do you keep him in the game and keep him battling out there? He's matured very nicely, <laughs> and he's still only 21 years old. That's what you got to remember. While it is his third camp, he's still only 21 years old. And he's matured nicely. He's more consistent than he's been. And, and that battle is playing itself out. You know, we're not making that. And they've played with different players. They've played in different situations. And, uh, you know, they've got another week and a half for it to finish up. And, and even at that point, whatever happens at that point, it's not permanent. You know, if you look at the way we started the year and, and the changes that were made through the course of the year as we continue to get better last year, the starting lineup on opening night, there's still a lot of competition happening from that point forward. But the soft side of hockey that you talk about a lot and about the cadre aspect, you, how do you keep him from not getting down when he's doing pretty much everything he can do at this level that you've asked him to do? And he's still getting, you know, beat down on that third line. Yeah, I don't think he's getting beaten down at all. You know, he's played well in, in some spurts and, and, you know, he's had a good camp. But it's not about beating down. It's about as we get better as a hockey team, the bar keeps getting higher and higher. It, it, you know, it's not good enough just to make the team. You have to make the team and you have to contribute. And I think his own maturity level will handle that. I'm fully confident that he's, you know, he sees the big picture. He wants to be an NHL player at a high